What's up, peeps and my fellow YouTubers? This is Joe Passarelli, the Joe Passarelli Show, here on YouTube, on my channel, the Joe Passarelli Channel. Want well, to thank everyone for liking, subscribe, subscribing, commenting. Got a lot of feedback on my Michael Pineda post from yesterday. Some positive, some negative. I wanted to delve a little bit more into that, as well as further along the news, which has been broken today. Uh, here, Thursday, the day after the big Pine Tar Gate exploded there last night at Fenway. Okay, so, people are saying I'm condoning cheaters for getting into the Hall of Fame. I'm not necessarily trying to say that. All I meant by my rant yesterday was baseball profited from the use of steroid users from, look at just the great chase of 98 with McGuire and Sosa. That helped save baseball after baseball had plummeted in ratings due to the strike of, of 94. They hadn't gotten their full traction back. I mean, the Yankees, the Braves, there were some markets who were, who were doing good. Cleveland was doing good. But at the same time, baseball as a whole was struggling. And the great chase of 98, the great home run chase of 98, helped revitalize baseball. Chicks dig the long ball. And that's all I was trying to say is that you look at Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, baseball profited off that. Bud Selig sat there with a scowl and watched the whole thing happen with Barry Bonds. He profited off it. Baseball profited off it. The San Francisco Giants profited off it. Roger Clemens was a huge draw everywhere he went, and I think he would have been one of the greatest pitchers of all time no matter what garbage he put in his body. And that goes the same thing for Barry Bonds. That's the great tragedy of players like Barry Bonds and, and Clemens and even Mark McGuire. They were probably going to get in the Hall of Fame regardless. You, when you look at their numbers, when you look at just their ability to, to either hit a baseball or hit a home run or or, or co be a commanding pitcher in the case of Roger Clemens. And, you know, these, these players took it, tried to take advantage of, of something that was going to prolong their careers, and we saw that with the success, success of specifically Clemens and Bonds in their later years. We know what happened. But all I'm trying to say is baseball profited off it. It's a big farce. It's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. When you look at the names that have been leaked throughout the years, and, uh, there seems to be moles in the players' union. There's all kinds of shady things going on. It's an old boys' network. Cheating's always been part of the game. Going back to Ty Cobb, the movie Cobb, starring Tommy Lee Jones. I botched on that yesterday, starring the great Tommy Lee Jones. Go check it out. Go. Uh, there's plenty of biographies on Ty Cobb out there. and Go see how, how baseball players in the late 1800s and early 1900s, how, how dirty they played and how much of a precedent has set for this sport to be dirty. Major League umpires aren't even instructed to check the players for pine tar or any foreign substances unless the opposing manager m makes a, a challenge to or a or, or, or request to, to see if there's a foreign substance on the opposing player. It's ridiculous. Why aren't the umpires encouraged to go get the problem fixed themselves and not putting it on the onus of the other manager spotting it. They're supposed to be policing the game, and this is their conduct? That's all my point, folks, in, in, in illustrating the comical responses toward Michael Pineda yesterday, uh, you know, and the fact that baseball, the precedent has been set. Throw asterisks, uh, asterisks all across the record book, all across the Hall of Fame. That's just my opinion on it. But anyway, breaking news from today, Michael Pineda did receive a 10-game suspension. He's only going to miss one star as the rotation falls. It's all good. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And as I said yesterday, Michael Pineda did deserve a 5-10 to 10 game suspension and did deserve to get ejected from the game. He, he, he is asking for it, and I do find it comical. But at the same time, all you people wearing your judgy hats out there, you need to calm down. You need to relax. Now, I'm about to sign out. Sign off, rather. Got the Strike Zone to do 8 to 10 p.m. live on rickradio.org and 90.7 FM WXIN. Broadcast live in the Providence, Rhode Island area. Tune in. Call in with your thoughts. We got Joe Bruin calling in today from the New England Fan Fest. Uh, I think he, he uh, has ties with the New England Hall of Fame. Got a big event in June at the Crown Plaza Hotel. A big autograph signing there promoting. He's going to be calling in, promoting it live. Also, our, our thoughts on... Sox Yanks on the Bruins on NHL playoffs and everything that's going on in the world of sports here live 
on the Strike Zone on RickRadio.org and on my channel, the Joe Passarelli Show, Joe Passarelli Channel. Thank everybody for commenting. Appreciate the feedback, both positive and negative. At least if I'm eliciting a negative response out of you, I know what I'm saying is resonating with you and causing at least some kind of reaction. I appreciate all the comments. Keep it coming. Let's keep the momentum going, go folks. Joe Passarelli, you're about to see me on the Strike Zone. Till then, keep it real or keep it moving.